Shrek the movie is really self-explanatory, and there's really no reason you shouldn't know what Shrek is. And if you don't remember what it is, let's recap by looking back at Shrek and this higher franchise that is brought up. Shrek 1 is the best fairy tale parody movie to ever exist, and it's the first time it was attempted to do that. Well, later on, this movie tries to, and this. But what makes Shrek so special is that it doesn't try to be the greatest movie, greatest fairy tale movie of all time. It does become very serious. And yeah, it's not really a comedy film. Well, a little bit of it is, but some parts of it is not really kid intended. Like this. Parfaits may be the most delicious thing on the whole damn planet. This is my swamp. Our swamp. Let go, donkey. Go. Stubborn jackass. Smelly ogre. Fine. Wait, what are you doing? Listen to me. Uh, look, you love this woman, don't you? Yes. You want to hold her? Yes. Please her? Yes. Then you got to, got to try a little tenderness. The chicks love that romantic crap. Shrek also gives off very good morals, such as be yourself and also don't judge people by their looks or how they act because like what shrek said hey what's your problem shrek what you got against the whole world anyway huh look i'm not the one with the problem okay it's the world that seems to have a problem with me people take one look at me and go ah help run a big stupid ugly ogre <sighs> they judge me before they even know me that's why i'm better off alone the plot of the first movie is simple enough where Farquaad puts fairy tale creatures at Shrek's swamp because he saved Donkey and Shrek just goes on a journey to Lord Farquaad's castle, his home whole village. He fights like a it's like a wrestling match it's kinda of like a wrestling match that he imagined this to, to be. And he goes on another quest to save the prince save a princess that Lord Farquaad desires because he's too small and he's too lazy to even do anything. But they get the, they save the princess from a dragon and they start just knowing each other, like getting to know each other, like who they really are, like their secrets. Then as they go along, there's a lot of loss, betrayal and despair when it gets to close to like the end of the movie. But there is resolution and Shrek and Donkey had an argument. That he, then they like conclude their whole argument and just become friends. And they crash the wedding, kill... Actually, the, the dragon kills Lord Farquaad because he, she eats him and Shrek and Fiona get married and happily ever after. It's pretty simple. As we go on to Shrek 2, this is where the franchise starts to get better. Shrek and Fiona finish their romantic honeymoon. As they go back to the swamp, there is a um, trumpeteers and they announce that they know that they're married somehow. Are they watching them? I don't know. But they tell them that um, that Fiona's parents want, wanted to invite her to their party at um, at far far away which is basically the beverly hills of fairy tale land and they pack up donkey comes along and the the rest of the fairy tale gang which i really didn't talk about in shrek one but the fairy tale gang jinji pinocchio the big bad wolf and the three little pigs they stay in the house to take care of the, the entire house and just chill you know, just chill. After the whole like things going on with Shrek One, when they were transported there, and they were just basically the fairy tales in Shrek One, they they just were taken away, while the owners of the fairy tales were given money for some reason. There needs to be something. Why why uh, Warfarqua is doing this? 
and far, far away is numerous, numerous um, references to real life stores such as Starbucks, Old, Old Navy, Burger King, and pretty much more. Oh yeah, Foot Locker is in um, Shrek the Third. As they arrive to the royal castle where Fiona's parents live, which they're the king and queen of, far, far away, they are not impressed at all. As a matter of fact, the king of far, far away really hates Shrek because he's an ogre and his daughter is still an ogre. After a huge argument in the dinner scene, which is probably the best scene in Shrek 2, other than um, the final battle and when they go to the potion factory. So King Harold hires Puss in Boots to kill Shrek. And of course it does not work. And Puss in Boots just joins along with Shrek and Fiona because after the huge fight in the dinner scene, Fiona's not happy. And they go, they decide to go to the factory, which I talked about earlier and just find a potion to make Fiona happy. Pretty self-explanatory, again. As Shrek, Donkey, and Puss in Boots walk along through the forest, they take the potion of called Happily Ever After, which that they don't know is that it puts side effects on them, like different side effects. The next day, Actually, before it happens, it starts raining, and they fall all fall asleep, including Fiona. The next day, they they all turn normal. Shrek, Fiona are human, and Donkey is a white horse, and Puss in Boots turns into nothing. He's just his normal self, which is a good thing, though. As Shrek decides to find Fiona, Prince Charming finds her first, claiming he is Shrek. He fools her set so they can be happily ever after instead of Shrek and Fiona. Which is the big plan of the fairy godmother. After a huge battle with a giant gingerbread man, Shrek, Donkey, Puss and Boots, and the rest of the fairy tale gang decide to find the fairy godmother in the fairy in the castle. They try to get the wand and try to destroy it. And they actually do, but However, Prince Charming kisses Fiona, which is, if, if someone kisses, if um, Shrek doesn't kiss Fiona after midnight, then it's just a curse for Shrek. And of course it does happen, but somehow it doesn't work. King Harold saves Shrek's life from the fairy godmother destroying him. And it's just a reflector because he's wearing armor. And it killed his fairy godmother. And Prince Charming is pretty sad. And happily ever after once again. And Donkey apparently becomes a dad to these mutated drunkies. But then when it comes to Shrek the third, that's where it kind of turns into a disaster. So the king decides that Shrek and Fiona become the future king and queen of Far Far Away. With an awkward scene with like all the unnecessary um uniform. Well not uniform, but like royal um suits. Shrek, of course, doesn't want to be king, and sadly, King Harold is dying as a frog, which is one of the most disastrous and the most devastating deaths I had to see on Shrek. But what Shrek doesn't know is that Prince Charming plans to take revenge on him because he stole Princess Fiona. Prince Charming teams up with Trees, Captain Hook, and basically the princess um, villains. As Shrek goes on a journey once again to find a new king of Far Far Away, he 
suddenly hears that he is going to be a father as well. Which they had a huge argument about because baby ogres supposedly seem worse than regular babies. And after having some weird dreams of having a baby ogre, they they finally arrive to um Worcester. It's basically a high school in royalty, like the medieval times. As they saw, as they find the, the future king, King Arthur, voiced by Justin Timberlake himself, is the future king of Far Far Away. A after Shrek convinces him that he's the king, he decides to just go with him. After they find him, we move on to Fiona with her mother and many of the, the famous princesses. Uh, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, and so on and so forth. But suddenly, Prince Charming and his evil army decides to go to the castle and try to capture Shrek. But, but he's not there, of course. Then they find the fairy tale gang, and they don't, they try to not tell him where Shrek goes, and of course, it fails, which is pretty, pretty much a letdown to a lot of fans. Well, mainly because it's, they try to make it annoying too. But however, the princess did escape before Prince Charming arrived as they they try to find out what's going on then um one of the princesses rapunzel betrays them where she lures them into a trap which rapunzel is with prince charming then the princesses get captured by him of course like the fairy tales and we move on to shrek and artie Although Shrek and Artie have huge arguments and Shrek doesn't want to tell him that he was originally going to be king because an ogre is king. And as they move along and they go to this weird forest, they meet um, a wizard named Merlin, which he's not really a, a Merlin that most people couldn't remember from any from anything. As Shrek finds out that Fiona is captured by Prince Charming, he decides to go back to far, far away. Although they capture everyone, then Donkey, Fiona, Puss in Boots, and the rest of the gang decide to fi find a way to escape before a huge play, which is the big part of the movie, before they kill Shrek live in a play the game make it to the play and already gives off a, a moral speech a good friend of mine once told me that just because people treat you like a villain or an ogre or just some loser it doesn't mean you are one the thing that matters most is what you think of yourself if there's something you really want or someone you really want to be, then the only person standing in your way is you. Me? Get him, lad! Yeah! No, 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 no. What, what I mean is, each of you is standing in your own way. After a part of the tower that's in the play falls down, it lands on Prince Charming and then kills him. And Prince Artie is now king. Then... Shrek and Fiona have their kids, and it's not one, not two, but it's three kids, ogre kids. Moving on yeah. to Shrek Forever so After. This is slightly better than Shrek the Third, which people for some reason say it's um like a fan story, but it's all made by all made by DreamWorks. So. The movie is about Rumpelstiltskin where he wants Shrek to sign a treaty where it transport him, transports him to his world where everything is different from now. 
after having a birthday party for his kids, he starts to get angry by the villagers. All I want is for things to go back to the way they used to be. Back when villagers were afraid of me and I could take a mud bath in peace. When I could do what I wanted, when I wanted to do it. Back when the world made sense. You mean back before you rescued me from the Dragon's Keep? Exactly. Just look at Fiona's face. She's broken into pieces. But after that huge mean-spirited argument, he gets transported into a world where Rumpelstiltskin rules the entire world, basically. As Shrek thinks that this is a whole happy ever after thing, he decides to kiss Fiona, and of course, something doesn't work. It doesn't work at all, which is pretty sad. Then they decide to um, face against um, Rumpelstiltskin and his army. They, um, they do Princess Fiona and and Shrek, Shrek um, kiss once again. Then everything goes back to normal to where Shrek was yelling or no, no, he was roaring. And then he realizes that he's back after the huge argument and everything goes back to where it was. It's kind of like Ninjago season six, like before the whole thing, it was all just a dream. And that concludes the entire Shrek, um, fourth trilogy i guess but I, there's lots of rumors that illumination is gonna help make shrek 5 but who knows if that's gonna be real and if it was real who knows that they're gonna get the old cast back because it's been years since shrek 4 came out which was 2011 and the year right now is 2020 of this date of the video I got the and to fall in love who knows what's gonna again. happen next i mean even if shrek is gonna be a huge meme nowadays the entire shrek franchise will live on forever <laughs>